Hoarders, Assemble. I saved up 560 legendary materials and 5 iconic crystals to forge as many legendary equipment for my new setup as I can. 558.98 materials to be accurate, but 560 sounds better. All this time I've been waiting and saving my materials for the right conditions, which were, firstly and most importantly, the moment when I finally spent those 3178 legendary sculptures I've been hoarding till the last video, so I would know which equipment I should make to upgrade my new open field arsenal. And secondly, the right amount of blueprints for my target equipment, because I wanted to be sure that I can create the best gear for my new commanders. And in this KVK, just before the pass 4 has opened, finally, all planets have aligned. Yes, once again. Psst, hey you, yeah you, do you want some fruits? So after seeing me hoarding up 1.7 million action points, 10 years worth of speed ups, 3178 legendary sculptures and 418 legendary tavern keys, I'm sure that you are not surprised anymore that I also hoarded up equipment materials. As for why did I do that? Simply because I wanted to wait till I spent all those heads I've been hoarding for so long, so I would know which equipment and accessories I need to make for my new setup. And of course the biggest reason as always, for content. How long did it take me to save this many materials up? Honestly, it really didn't take me that long. By now, there are events popping up every week to provide more materials as long as you take the time and energy to complete them. Only by completing the Golden Kingdom, Serali Crisis, Ian's Ballad and the Sunset Canyon, one can get about 10 legendary materials every month. Of course, given only if you can do these events on the highest level. If you can't yet, it's a good goal to aim for. And that's without counting the Shadow Legion, Hunt for History, Esmeralda's House, Holy Nice Treasure, Daily VIP Chests, KVK Rewards, Marauders, KVK Barbs, Tavern Material Chests and of course the Daily Material Production. So as you see, collecting materials is pretty fast as long as you're active and you know how to complete the events. No, I did not spend money on it. I already explained in a previous video of what I'm spending on as a low spender. And the Gear Up Bundle is certainly not among those. But anyways, back to the upgrade. If you have seen my previous video, then you know that I used 3314 legendary sculptures in total to max out 5 legendary commanders to upgrade my open field arsenal from this to this. So that meant that it was time to upgrade their equipment before the pass 4 opens as well. So as I mentioned earlier, I had about 560 legendary materials I could use to forge. But I also had many epic and blue equipment I could dismantle to get more materials back as well. At this point, I've collected enough blueprints for my target gear too, so it was time to decide which ones I want to go for. So before we jump into upgrading my setup, let's take a look at what I've been running around with till now. My tank, Paco Harald, had these equipment, providing a total of 31% defense, 8% attack, 14% health, 9% march speed and 30% chance for 6.5% health debuff. Oh yes, look at the dagger, amazing. My damage dealer AoE silencer march Kuan Yu and Leonidas had 45% defense, 21.5% health, minus 5% incoming counterattack damage and 30% chance to gain an extra 50 rage. My debuffing CPO Alex March had 13% attack, 22% health, 5.5% defense, 13 rage reduction and 4% speed. My buffing Saladin William March had 21% attack, 16% defense and 11% health. And my best damage dealer AoE defense debuffer XY Nevsky March had 25% defense, 31% health, 7.5% attack, 10 points rage reduction and 10% chance to increase damage by 50% for 2 seconds. Oh yeah, the ring of doom. So as you see, there was a lot of space for improvement. Like really a lot of space. I had two options. The first one was focus on creating one good set by refining my existing equipment to get the special talent for every equipment in the set before I move on to upgrade the next commander's gear. And the second option was try to raise the overall level of my 5 marches combat power by upgrading each commander's worst gear. I chose the second option because the first option seemed like more of a rally leader or garrison lead thing to do and because I wanted to make sure that all 5 marches I use on the field got enough power to cause as much damage to the enemy as possible and to survive as long as possible. By now, I have already crafted a total of 13 legendary equipment but had only one with a special talent. Yes Dagger, you are the best. So I was hoping that I will get some luck this time and going to get at least one special talent on one of my new equipment. My priority for equipment was very simple. I already had a 15% attack boost for my infantry marches thanks to this awesome looking city theme I won in the last infantry zenith. 
so I didn't think that I need to focus on that stat. And also, given that the KVK attack only gives attack as well, I decided to boost up the defense and health of each march as much as possible. High 5 Blue Shield, my favorite gear in the entire game. After this gorgeous special talent dagger of course. You're the best! But using this 15% infantry attack team also meant that I'm receiving a minus 5% defense from my cavalry. So I wanted to balance that out a little bit too. Using the 5% defense buff already does that, but given how much health the cavalry set gives, it was a no-brainer what equipment to pick for them. So with that, let the upgrade begin! I thought that from these commanders, Kuan Yu and Leonidas had the most complete set so far, so I decided to focus on improving the others. I decided that the first march I should upgrade has to be the one that gets targeted the most, which was obviously XY Nevsky. For this march, I already had 3 legendary equipment done plus the Ring of Doom accessory, but there were still 2 spots where I could have done the equipment setup better, the helm and boots. Up till now, I've been using the blue Expedition Warhelm, which provides 8% cavalry defense, and the Cloud Racers, which gave 7.5% attack. So my first two targets of equipment were the Pride of the Khan, that I only recently purchased from the KVK shop, and which gives 15% defense without a special talent, which was a 7% defense boost compared to the helm I've been using till now, and the boots of the Hellish Wasteland, which not only give 7.5% of health, but would also give an additional 3% health for the two pieces set bonus, since I already had the heavy armor of hellish wasteland equipped on XY. So with that, I went for them. I was really hoping that the KVK helm will give a special talent, so it was time to press the forge button and… Special talent, special talent, special talent, special talent. Oh well, it's alright, there's still a lot of crafting left, I'm sure that the next one will be a special talent. Come on boots, and… Special talent, special talent, special talent. Nope, still no. It's alright, I will get some luck after this bad start. I'm sure that the next one will give a special talent. Now that I made these two new shiny pieces, I equipped them on XY and swapped the 8% defense expedition helm for the 8% attack abyssal visage helm and the 1.7% attack edge boots for the 7.5% attack cloud racers, which I've been using till now on Saladin. Since I didn't need this purple helm and green boots anymore, I dismantled them and got 13 legendary materials back in total, which I could use to craft more equipment. With this, I had a nice looking legendary set for my XY, which hopefully will help him to survive on the field a bit longer. My next target was my Paco Harald March. Since Harald loses defense the longer he fights, I wanted to provide as much defense for this march as possible. I already had the most beautiful accessory in existence on them, my special talent dagger. Also had the set helm done and the shield's return boots. One that was an early game mistake, probably the first legendary equipment I ever crafted, before the infantry set boots have appeared in the game and the Eternal Knight, which I also considered as a mistake, since it only provided 12% defense, while a purple Karuax Humility with special talent would provide 10.5% health. But anyways, since Harald needs defense, and because I'm not well enough to dismantle legendary equipment just yet, I thought that they were good for this march. Also a note, that since they could provide an extra 6% of base health boost, if I make them into iconic, refining them and getting a special talent for them in the future was a very nice option. With that said, there were still many spots where I could have improved this setup. I wanted to upgrade the chestplate, gloves and accessories. And I just had the right blueprints to do so. Gorgeous. One equipment I've been meaning to craft for this march for a long time already was the Vengeance. No, not that Vengeance, this Vengeance. Given that I do like counterattack on my troops and this accessory would be able to further upgrade the already really nice counterattack Bakal and Harad provides with an additional 8%. And because now Iconic Crystals can give base health stat for accessories, it was a great time to craft it. Getting a special talent on this one would be really great. Special talent, special talent, special talent. Oh well, it would have been really nice to get it on this one. But it's alright, I'm sure that the next one will have the special talent, right? I quickly swapped the Call of the Loyal 6.5% March Speed accessory to the 8% Counterattack Vengeance and went back to Forge again. My next target was the most obvious one, the Hope Cloak. Yeah, I surely hope that this one will be a special talent. This one was a no-brainer. Even though it's not a set piece, it provides a 12% defense boost over the 11% attack Blade of the Eternal Empire. So it was an obvious choice. I pressed the forge button, ready to see the beautiful special talent pop up, and finally... Still 
still nothing. It's alright. I'm sure that the next one will crit. So I quickly swapped the Queen Soul 8% attack to the Hope Cloak's 12% defense and went back to the Blacksmith. This meant the Queen Soul got back 12.5% legendary materials and was ready to forge my next legendary piece. The 7.5% defense then braces of the Eternal Empire. Now, this wasn't a massive upgrade, but since I already made the Eternal Knight and Shield's return, I needed to craft this piece for the extra 3% defense the two pieces set bonus provides. So I readied myself and pressed the forge button. Special talent. Special talent. It's okay. To the next one. I'm sure that that will crit. With this, I consider this march to be done. Some of you might be wondering why I use the dagger on this march. While the greatest glory could provide more benefit by increasing the normal and counterattack damage of Pakal Harald. It's because this is the march that survives the longest on the battlefield, and since it doesn't have any buffing or debuffing ability that could be at any help for my alliance members, I use the dagger on this one so as long as it's alive and ignored on the battlefield, it can debuff the health of the enemy. So now that the Poka Horrod march was looking good, I felt good to move to my next march I wanted to upgrade, CPO Alex. Among all my infantry marches, this was the least good looking one. This was my third infantry set that Constantine and Joan used to use before I got CPO, and I still haven't made a single piece of legendary equipment for them. This had a lot of spots I had to upgrade, so I started on the middle, the Queen's Soul. Unlike the previous one I dismantled, this one had a special talent, but even with that I still preferred the Hope Cloak over this one. So I went back to the blacksmith and was ready to make another one. I opened a quick forge window, danced my special talent dance, said a prayer to the RNG gods, knocked under the wood, throw salt behind my back and pressed the button. <coughs> it's fine, I don't need you, special talent Hope Cloak. The next one will crit for sure. I swapped the plates, dismantled this queen soul as well. Wow, thanks for the extra hope cloak Lilith. Got 12.5 legendary materials back and went for my next target. The gold helm of the eternal empire. I was very confident that at least this one will have the special talent. I can't be this unlucky. But just a moment later, the game did remind me that yes, I can be. I swapped the 4.5% attack Windswept Warhelm to the 11% defense Gold Helm. I still had the boots, gloves and maybe even the pants that I could improve on. And I also could have crafted more accessories. I quickly dismantled the Warhelm and got 3.75 legendary materials back and went on to further upgrade CPO's armor. My next target was another piece of Vembraces of the Eternal Empire. At least this one has to be a special talent. Earth, Fire, Wind, Water, Heart. By your powers combined, I am Special Talent. Why am I not surprised? Oh well, I'm sure that after all this bad luck, the next one, the next one will have a Special Talent, right? I swapped the 3.5% health Windswept Bracers for the 7.5% defense of Van Braces. At this point, I was running low on materials, so I decided to look at things I don't need anymore and I can dismantle. I dismantled the bracers I just swapped and got 2.5% legendary materials back and another piece of Quinsaw, which gave me another 15 legendary materials, the Frost Boots, which got me back another 10 legendary materials, and went on to forge the 7.5% defense Sturdy Boots of the Eternal Empire. After crafting 8 legendary equipment without a single special talent, this one really had to be one. Not the accessories I was hoping for, not even the KVK helm crit I really wanted, but we can be picky, right? Alright, special talent Sturdy Boots, come to me! Alright, you don't wanna give me a special talent? It's fine, I'll do it myself. With... These purple pants. Oh well, so this is how the special talent screen looks like? How would I know? God, I'm so sad. At least I have you, Dagger. And with that, I was done. I was out of materials and couldn't forge any more equipment. But I still had 5 iconic crystals to use. I chose to use the iconic crystals on my accessories first, because they are very universal and can be used on any commander and because they give health as a base stat. First, I gave it to my one and only special talent equipment, my incredible dagger, awesome. Then the ring of doom, amazing. Then the vengeance, oh yes, 
the Horn of Fury, beautiful. And after thinking it through, I decided to use my last iconic crystal on the Ash of Dawn pants to provide more health for my XY. Epic! So with that, I was finally done with all my upgrades for my marches and I was ready for the KVK fights. This is what I had before the upgrade, both commanders and equipments wise, and this is what I have now. My Pokal Harald went from this to this. Now he's got 53.5% defense, 10.5% health, 8% counterattack, 30% chance to debuff 6.5% health and 7 true base health. This is what I had on my Kuan Yu Leonidas and it's still the same. Yeah, there is no change on that. 45% defense, 21% health, 30% chance to gain 50 rage and minus 5% incoming counterattack damage. This is what I had on my CPO Alex and this is what I have now. 41% defense, 21% health, 13 points of rage reduction and 6.5% march speed. This is what I had on my XY Nevsky and this is what I have now. 32% defense, 41.5% health, 10 points of rage reduction and 10% chance to increase damage by 50% for 2 seconds. And for the last, this is what I had on my Saladin William and this is what I have now. Yeah, I didn't actually have any materials left to upgrade this one properly. They've got 19% attack, 25% defense and 11% health. Um, let's just ignore this for now. Saladins don't get targeted that fast anyways. This is something I can do in a future video for content. So with that, I was done. I maxed out 5 commanders, crafted 9 legendary equipment and used 5 iconic crystals. Epic! So with this, my hoarding days were over. And it was time to go all out in the upcoming KVK. And now, what did it cost to forge all these legendary equipment and iconic crystals? Let's get to the numbers. In overall, forging 9 legendary equipment pieces cost me 250 iron, 200 leather, 100 ebony and 210 million gold with an additional 100 million from using 5 iconic crystals and 15 million for refining the Karuak's humility, making it a total of 325 million gold. I also dismantled 8 pieces of equipment which gave me a total of 61.78 legendary materials. These equipment I crafted raised the total stats of my 5 open field marches by 74% defense, 5.5% health and 8% counterattack, while I lost 28.5% attack in the progress. Which might look bad, but when you add the additional 15% attack that my new city theme provides to my 3 infantry marches, it gets a lot better. Of course it also means minus 5% defense for my 2 cavalry marches. All in all, I like what I got. Of course, it could have been a lot better if I could have gotten at least one special talent, but it is what it is. Of course I know that this setup is far from perfect, but for now it will do. And with the power of hoarding, one day I will surely be able to finish upgrading them all. If you have any question or just got anything you'd like to talk about, please don't be shy to text me in game on discord or just in a comment under the video. Thank you for watching, here is your well deserved fruits, fruity out. See you in the next video, maybe.